a World Run 5K, and work-based learning are all coming up today on the link, so stay tuned. Hi, I'm Lana Mobley. And I'm Mark Whitlock. Uh, Amanda Sexton's going to be with us here today. Lana, work-based learning, a huge part of what goes on at Central Educational Center. And I will say that New Link took part in the work-based learning um, program during the summer, and we had three interns that worked for us, did a great job, uh, Leah, Aman uh, Amber, and Caleb, and we had them out in the field helping uh, Laura and Jake, and they did a great job. Keep, and then, keeping the link going all yes, summer long? Yes, and then now in the fall, Amber and Leah are back with us as in the work-based learning program, and it's great because they're getting hands-on experience in the workplace, which will look great on their resume when look, they look go forward. Look great on their resume. There is no better learning. Right. There's no higher level of simulation than exactly. actually actually being in the workplace. Mm -hmm. They learn a lot. They really know? do. They really and, do. And it's interesting when the when the team members come out, they don't really understand what it's about until they get their hands in it, right. and then then right. it kind of clicks. So it clicks and it makes sense. And you see them grow mm -hmm. and develop very oh, rapidly absolutely. once they get into that role. So I'm anxious to hear Amanda with um, her talking about the work-based learning program. Super. Yeah. 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 Presidential campaign is up and running. It, and what do we do? We need to all, you know, study the candidates right. and get out and vote. Doesn't matter to us who you vote for, but you can't complain if you don't get out and vote. That, that's <laughs> right. Lots of lots of uh, issues on the ballot mm -hmm. in, in addition to candidates. So everybody needs to study those issues, exactly. become familiar with them, ask questions, mm -hmm. question those candidates, and you are exactly right. You can't complain if you don't vote. Because if you're complacent and then you sit back and go, well, it won't matter anyway. Oh, it absolutely could matter. Yes, it would. You know, it absolutely could matter. So anyway, that's, that's our little... Um, you know, advice for all you viewers today. More to come on the link, so you stay with us. You don't want to miss this show. We'll be right back. Hey, Martha, this is Linda. Do you know where my parents are? I saw them around here earlier. I'm sure they're around here somewhere. Don't worry about them. Well, are they going to the dining room for meals? I know Mom didn't want to cook anymore. Yes, I saw them go down just a minute ago. Hey, Mom. I've been trying to reach you all day. I want to stop by and visit. No, not tonight. We've got friends over this evening. We're going to have dinner, and then we're going to play some cards. Come see Wesley Woods and Noonan. Gracious retirement living in an active, continuing care environment. We're excited to welcome Amanda Sexton from Central Educational Center to the link to talk about work-based learning. That is a tremendous program. It has a lot to offer our community. Many of you, many of our employers are already involved with work-based learning. Amanda Sexton, welcome to The Link. Thank you. Glad to be here. Amanda, let's, let's uh, jump right into what work-based learning is by talking about something that's just happened, a new patient navigator program. Help us understand what work-based learning is by talking about patient navigator. The Patient Navigator program was a program that was designed by Piedmont Noonan Hospital and Central Educational Center's Work-Based Learning Department, and it was designed for those students who have an interest in pursuing health care after high school. And so they uh, were selected, they had to apply, uh, they came from all three base high schools, so a lot of students represented throughout the county. and. They did everything from checking on patients in the emergency department, asking if they needed water, warm blankets, keeping the equipment clean, uh, checking patients in as they walk into the emergency department, running errands uh, to various departments throughout the hospital. So it was a small task, but the small tasks are very important when it comes to customer service and patient satisfaction. It's those little things that mean so much when the patients and their families are in the ER. So that's, that's a good way to to segue into work-based learning overall. That's a very specific example. Uh, Amanda, why work-based learning? Why is it important that high school students today get involved in 
internships and apprenticeships and those forms of work-based learning? It's very important that they start to understand while they're in high school what they need to be success successful in their careers after high school. And work-based learning offers them that opportunity. It individualizes education for them, okay. which is something that is very important to each student because they have their own individual desires and goals and needs. And so work-based learning through an internship, we can help meet those needs. We can also help to um, close that skills gap, whether it's soft skills, which we know are very important um, with careers, or technical skills. We can help close that gap because they are leaving high school with skills that are marketable that they can take out into the real world and earn a real wage. So you, you've, you've talked about closing that skills gap, and I know you've told me you've got some very rigorous standards. You're having employers evaluate these interns, these apprentices on a regular basis. Talk yes. about that evaluation system. What, what happens there? Each month employers evaluate their interns and they, you know, anything from does not meet, meet expectations to exceeds expectations. And that is how we know, <coughs> excuse me, that the program is working, is through these evaluations. And employers give us feedback. And currently over 96% of our interns meet or exceed expectations. Wow, 96%. Absolutely. So that is a huge communication tool that we use to ensure that we are, that the interns are meeting their expectations. You know, and we, we say 96%, and that's of a, that's of a pretty large number. I, I noticed right. last year um, 376, 380 right. interns and apprentices, about 216 employer sites. So Absolutely. you've got a lot of young people and you've got a lot of employers. Right. Why is it that employers are buying into work-based learning? What's the benefit for employers? Well, a lot of them say that they use it as a way to help grow their future workforce. Okay. A lot of different industries are buying into it for that exact reason. Um, they come to them as an intern, they learn, they get to know the student, they learn their skill set, and then when they go off to college or get that industry certification and come back and apply for a job, they remember, oh, this was that intern and they did an excellent job for us. We know their work ethic. We know what they're capable of doing. So it's a way to grow the future workforce here in Coweta County. Uh, Amanda, it's something that I know we've looked uh, at um, some European countries. We've mm -hmm. looked at Canada. Right. We've looked at the history of the United States. It's something that we've done in our own past in this country that we're beginning to ramp up again because this local community said that's what we need to do. Absolutely. Um, advanced STEM internship, one of the newer additions to work-based mm -hmm. learning. Give us a little bit of uh, insight into advanced STEM internships. What's STEM, S-T-E-M? STEM stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, and Math. And our advanced STEM internships were created last summer, I mean last school year. Um, Donald White, our science curriculum director, played a huge role in getting this started. And it's designed for those students who hope to pursue science, technology, engineering, or math after high school. They've taken um, quite a few academic classes in those areas, and they want to go out and apply that knowledge into the real world. The workplace, we have learned, is the best teacher. And so by them taking that knowledge and applying it out into local industries in their uh, perspective field, it's really great for them. It's great for the industry again, and it's, um, it's just a win-win all the way around. You know, we hear in those STEM fields, that's where real shortages are. Absolutely. We, we hear from our companies, they need that more technologically mm -hmm. oriented young entry level right. worker who's right. ready to to jump right into automation and new mm -hmm. technologies and able to learn, capable to learn much beyond that right. over their career. Right. Amanda, um, this year in work-based learning, uh, while we continue to add numbers, we stay focused on quality. Tell us again, talk again about What's in that evaluation from employers? What is it that they're rating when they take a look at an intern? How are they evaluating? What are, what are the things that they're saying are good, right. meets or exceeds expectations? Right. Um, 
soft skills are the focus okay. of our evaluation. We know that soft skills are very important. There's, you know, industries are screaming for applicants to come to them with their soft skills, the problem solving capabilities, the right attitude, uh, able to communicate both, both verbally and written. Um, so those are the things that they are being evaluated on. Um, just today I was having students turn their evaluations in and I was looking over them. They were saying great communicator, works well with the team, um, excellent, communicates and connects well with patients. So those are the types of things that we look at. Um, are they able to work within a team environment? Are they able to um, you know, show up on time and dress appropriately and things like that. Those are the things that are very important to business and industry and so we really evaluate them on that. In addition to that though, we have training plans developed by the employer to help guide them on the skills that they expect them to learn while they are at their internships. What so. a great opportunity for a young person. What a tremendous chance to get to the highest levels of learning. We know today from all the research, it's going to take those really solid academic mm -hmm. skills and those workplace skills, Absolutely. those soft skills, that critical thinking, that mm -hmm. team orientation mm -hmm. in order to be successful. Got to have both. Amanda Sexton, Work-Based Learning, Central Educational Center, thanks for being with us today on The Link. Thank you. You stay tuned. He asked for faster internet. We asked, how fast? He said, blow my hair back fast. We said, no problem. Your local connection to the best and now faster technology in town. With high speed internet starting at $19.99 per month. New Link. There's always something happening in downtown Noonan. Shop at our unique businesses, dine at our locally owned restaurants, and play in our parks. Join us the first Saturday of each month for Market Days, featuring more than 50 vendors offering homemade, handmade, and homegrown products. Enjoy exciting annual events like the Labor Day Sidewalk Sale and 5K Road Race, the Fall Art Walk, the 20th Annual Taste of Noonan. Come downtown for the Oktoberfest beer tasting and downtown trick-or-treating. Discover downtown Noonan, where the owner is always in. From an English teacher and a cheerleading coach at Noonan High School to the assistant principal at Arnold Middle, in 2004, Dr. Laurie Barron came to Smoky Road Middle, and most recently, she was awarded the National Middle Level Principal of the Year. So our guest today is Dr. Laurie Barron. Laurie, I'm so glad to be here to talk to you. Thank you so much for having me. I'm very honored. It is such an honor for us to be here to, to talk to you and to know that in Noonan and Coweta County we have the National Principal of the Year. That Thank is you. that is quite an honor. So what do you think set you apart from the other um, the other people that were in contention for this award? I'd say no doubt that the staff that I work with every day. I, I, the other finalists were incredible, mm -hmm. and to sit in that room with them in Washington, D.C., as we were oh discussing God. and sharing right. ideas, how, what a neat opportunity mm -hmm. to share best practices and, and hear what they're doing, because there were also three high school finalists and then mm -hmm. three middle school finalists, and the six of us were able to spend a couple of days together in July and share practices and have roundtable discussions as part of the oh, interview process as well. But uh, it was neat to, to listen to them share, and certainly very humbling. Mm -hmm. But I think that what stood out to me that, that I'm so proud of is what our staff does for kids. Mm -hmm. It's Unfortunately, in today's society, a lot of times if a kid struggles or if there are problems or everything's not great mm -hmm. coming in, we people tend to judge, oh, that student, you know, has a bad home life or that student well, can't right. learn. And I think the thing I'm most proud of is how our staff treats all students. You know, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter where you come from or what you come with or what you come right. about. And I think the big difference is, I think, that others have seen that our staff believes in kids. That is amazing. Now, you've had quite a great record since <laughs> since you've been here because you've decreased absenteeism by 11%, mm -hmm. and then the math and reading scores have accelerated way beyond what's, what someone would consider normal. How have you accomplished this? And I know it sounds, I, I say this again, <laughs> but I really think the biggest part, we. Our mission and vision, our mission is striving to reach and motivate students, mm -hmm. which goes with our SRMS of Smoky Road Middle School. But we do that through our vision, which is four mm -hmm. things. Okay. Make sure kids attend school. Mm -hmm. Once they're here, make sure they're safe. Mm -hmm. Once they're safe, build relationships with them. Let them know they're valued and they matter. Mm -hmm. And then teach them. And that's what's worked for us, is we have not come in and said, 
we have low performance, we have all these problems. We've said, let's go in and build relationships with kids. And when you do it in that order, once kids are here and they feel safe and they know sure. you care about them, it's not just about a test score. Exactly. It's so much easier to get them to want to come to school. When, when a kid exactly. wants to be in your classroom, the, a kid doesn't want to miss school. Exactly. That makes such a huge difference. It, well, and it's, you're going to see an increase in achievement. Oh, absolutely. If you're absolutely. not absent, you're going to be present for instruction. Mm -hmm. And what happens is we found that the trick here, I think, for our staff is believing in what the child believes in. And mm -hmm. I think that's what stands out. I, of course, if... I was a high school English teacher, mm -hmm. and trust me, and people will laugh who know me, <laughs> I truly believed that that was the only thing happening in that building. I thought right. that the, my English classroom was the was it was it, <laughs> and and I didn't that that was my focus. Mm -hmm. But the way that I got people to buy into that was buying into what they believed in. I'm not sure the kids thought it was the most important <laughs> class, but you know when you when you go to their football games and you go watch them compete in volleyball and you go listen to their band concert sure. and you go to the chorus concert, well, when they come into your English classroom the next day, they they're know much it. more willing to give to you. Oh, absolutely, because you've built that bond right. and relationship level there and then they know you truly care about them. Right, and you know what? If it's football that gets them to excel in math, I am perfectly okay with that. Exactly, exactly. Whatever it takes to, right. to, to get that to get that student to, to learn. That is so awesome. Well, and the neat thing, too, is because we have something for every child, mm -hmm. we're doing well academically. We have a strong citizen support giving back to the community through service organizations. Our band and chorus is one of the oh, finest exactly. in the state of Georgia. Our athletic program uh -huh. excels. So we, what we found is we try to have something for every kid. So there's something every kid can attach to, then we can believe in that with them, mm -hmm. then they in turn give back to us. Now, I know you couldn't do a lot of these things without your business partner. Steve Mater and Southtown Motors has been an awesome business partner of Smoky Road Middle School mm -hmm. for a number of years. Are there certain programs that that relationship has actually helped you to, to attain? I can tell you, Steve has been a jewel for us. Mm -hmm. I mean, I told him, I said, <laughs> the Coweta County, the citizen of the year, they just finally realize what we've known all along. That's right. I mean, that's just who he is. But he actually supports the biggest thing we do to build those relationships. Mm. So he's an integral part. He is, Southtown sponsors our student recognition program. Okay. And remember I told you we try to find mm -hmm. an area for every child. Well, we recognize monthly students who excel in attendance, citizenship, extracurricular, mm -hmm. fine arts, academics, and athletics. That and so, so if you do yeah. something that stands out, we're going to find a way to recognize it. And without Steve's support, we couldn't do that. He, he is wonderful. He fully sponsors that. He also sits on our school council. So he brings mm -hmm. in that, that outside perspective of, hey, have you thought about this? Which right. is wonderful to have sure. that outside business mm -hmm. model because we're trying to get kids ready for college and career. Right. Not, not just get them out of middle school. Exactly. Not just get them to high school. Right. We want the middle school experience to help them be successful in their college and career. And having someone with a business perspective really come helps in that, and say, right. hey, this is what we're looking for and this is what I'm seeing, it, it's great for us to kind of keep a ground of reality. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm gonna, let's, turn the, let's turn the page a little bit and talk about you personally. Uh, you were a high school cheerleader mm -hmm. and you coached cheer, cheerleading at Noonan High School. Mm -hmm. And I can only imagine, I was a cheerleader in high school myself and of course, you know, I wish I could still do all those <laughs> stunts yeah, and tricks, too. but yeah, that, that's not going to happen. Uh, but um, what do you do in your personal life to help relieve the stress? Uh, what do you and your family like to do? Well, my husband Daniel is actually from Noonan, graduated mm -hmm. Noonan High School, and we have three daughters. They're mm -hmm. in 10th grade, 8th grade, and 3rd grade, hard okay. to keep up with. <laughs> but uh, we're big Georgia Bulldog fans. We uh -huh. both graduated from Georgia, and we have season tickets, so we go to all the football games, try to travel to a bowl game. So we're big Georgia fans. And then we also, we love Montana. We uh, are very fortunate. Every summer we go spend a couple weeks out in Montana hiking and oh. take the girls with us. And then we go out sometimes in the winter and ski in Whitefish, mm -hmm. which is right near Glacier mm -hmm. National Park. And so probably those are our big things, Georgia football and being and, in Montana and hiking. hiking. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Well, when we were talking earlier, you shared with us when you studied abroad. Mm -hmm. Share with our viewers a little bit about that experience. That was an incredible <laughs> experience. I had the opportunity to study abroad when I was in, between my junior and senior year at Georgia. I went to study at Oxford in uh -huh. England. And I took two classes. It was incredible. Got to travel a lot. Um, probably the hardest I've ever worked on classes because you only met once a week. So oh, everything so you was better on be you. prepared. Right. <laughs> and uh, it, it was just an incredible learning experience. I took a class on the Reformation and a class oh. on Virginia Woolf, which being the English major that <laughs> right. I was, loved it. And then I had the opportunity three years later, uh, my best friend Paige and I, we actually, she teaches at Arbor Springs and uh, was the teacher of the year this past year. Very she nice. and I 
took a big jump and we went for almost seven weeks and backpacked through Europe when we were in our early 20s and uh, hit all the high, highlights. You know, we went to Wimbledon, we went to, oh my um, goodness, we putted at St. Andrews, we went to the running of the bulls in Spain. So oh, we, and that was your favorite, that right? That was my favorite. There was an, it was the most cultural experience I've ever had by far. But you know, we were talking earlier too. My daughter, Madison, was mm -hmm. a, a student here. Right. Uh, I think she was in seventh grade when you came here. And she has studied abroad, and there's nothing like it. Mm -mm. It just rounds out these these young people. And I bet you had no fear what those seven weeks, right? You I just didn't. My did. parents did. I, exactly. <laughs> and when I went abroad with the program, they were a little more supportive because sure. there was some you know, connection to the University of Georgia. But when I told them three years later, and I was in my 20s supporting myself, <laughs> right. and they still didn't want me to go. Right. But well, uh, no, it, was, would... it was incredible. It was an incredible experience. I would recommend to anyone who has the opportunity mm -hmm. to study abroad as part of your college experience. It just makes you so much more culturally literate and so much mm -hmm. more aware of your surroundings mm -hmm. and the big picture in the world. And how you fit in and I mean it's just, it was just so neat to see all the culture and the history and the different demands and uh, it was an incredible experience. Well you have done such a nice job here and just observing all the staff and how you interact with them while we were um, waiting to to start the interview today it's you are connected with everyone here and it's very obvious and I mm -hmm. think that is that is success you know when you can have that that connection not only with the students but with every staff member whether it's mm -hmm. the custodian or yeah. whether it's you know your lead teacher or whomever and it's it's so nice to have Coweta County and Noonan represented as the National Middle School mm -hmm. Principal of the Year. That is awesome. Now, I believe you and Dr. Barker go to Washington soon. Yes, and I'm very honored that he and several others are going to be mm -hmm. able to go with me two weeks from now. Okay. We're up there for five days for a Principal Leadership Institute mm -hmm. where we meet with all the state principals of the year and the national finalists and, like I said, share best practices and, mm -hmm. and continue to learn to grow. That's what this has done, really, is it's been sure. such a wonderful opportunity to, to realize where we can still grow and where we can mm -hmm. still improve. And then that Friday night, there's a big black tie gala. Oh, and, uh, and that's yes. when you'll be awarded the, yes. the, the real so, award. And my husband's going with me, too, Very so I'm excited nice. about that. And we'll spend some time on Capitol Hill, you know, just trying to celebrate what's right with public education. Right. Well, on behalf of New Link and all our viewers, we want to say thank you for being our guest today, and congratulations. I know it, it's not hard, I mean, it's not easy from what you've, you know, what, you know, where you've come from and what you've done and what you've achieved, but Congratulations. <laughs> well, I'm honored to be a part of this school system. It's one of the finest in the country, and I have seen that firsthand, so I'm very honored. Good, good. Thank you. We want to say thank you again to Dr. Laurie Barron and congratulate, congratulate her once again on being the National Middle School Principal of the Year. Coming up, we have Sarah with the Community Calendar to tell us all about the upcoming events around town. Sarah, what do you have for us this week? Hey, everyone. It's time for the Community Calendar. If you're looking for a fun workout, come on over on September 29th at 8 a.m. to downtown Noonan for the World 5K Run. It is $30 pre-registration or $35 for walk-up registrations. If you'd like to register online, you can visit www.active.com. The race is also a qualifier for Peachtree Road Race. Bring your guitar down to Noonan's Historic Courthouse Square for Pickin' on the Square. It will be held next Saturday, the 15th at 11 a.m. There will be tons of entertainment and plenty of time to relax and listen to great local musicians. Everyone is invited to come down and play. On Thursday, September 20th, stop by First Baptist Church of Noonan to watch Grammy Award finalist The Sentryman in concert at 7 p.m. Bring along friends and family to join in the fun and see an amazing concert. Saturday, September 15th, head on down to the beautiful Dunaway Gardens. Garden day will be from 10 to 4. It is located at 3218 Roscoe Road and the admission is only $10 for adults and $8 for children. Well, thanks for joining me today with the Community Calendar. See you next time. Back to you, Lena. Thanks, Sarah. Next up, we have our Pet of the Week, and this week we have a boxer. Thanks, guys. I'm Sean Mulvaney. I'm standing here with Christina Fairchild, and we're uh, doing a Pet of the Week uh, for you guys. Uh, this is a, a lovely little boxer mix. We're down here at Animal Control on Silt Road. As you can see, he likes to go face-to-face -face and give little licks, and. A uh, very mellow dog, very strong, still a puppy, but uh, just a great, great dog. Looking for a forever home, uh, brought in here at Animal Controls, uh, Animal Control on the 29th of uh, August. And uh, just couldn't be more mellow or sweet, uh, just very in tune with humans, makes a lot of eye contact, looks up at you in the eyes. And, uh, just a, a great companion dog. I can tell that this is going to be a good family dog, showing to be uh, 
uh, I'm guessing about seven months right now, uh, is in kennel B14 uh, down here at Animal Control. But uh, if you're interested in coming and enriching your life and giving yourself a, a companion for many, many years to come that will give you unconditional affection, uh, a rescue is a great option. Uh, and you, uh, they never, it's my opinion that through the course of their lives, they never forget that you saved them from this environment. So uh, uh, do please consider, if you're thinking about getting a dog, coming down here to animal control and uh, giving Oscar a look. Uh, Oscar is definitely not grouchy and, uh, and loves to be held. Uh, would be a good uh, family dog, uh, probably uh, would be fine with young kids. Uh, Selt Road Animal Control, it's uh, Kennel B14. Oscar's his name. Back to you in the studio. Lana, that was a great show this week. Tremendous interview with Dr. Lori Barron, National Middle School Principal of the Year. That is awesome. What a neat, neat lady and what an amazing job she has done. She's done an incredible job. She's part of a great team of leaders, mm -hmm. uh, principals in our schools oh, throughout absolutely. the Cowardy County School System. Uh, she's done amazing work. It's being mm -hmm. recognized. That's certainly a reflection on the school system as a whole. It is. It really is. So it was, it was fun to interview her and, and spend some time with her today. You bet. You bet. Yeah. Let's hope that everybody continues to support our local teams. My gosh, football is in full, full swing. swing, full swing, and everybody should go support their team. New Link has, is participating in a lot of the games. Uh, this last Friday night, we were at the concession stand in Noonan, and that's always fun, and I don't think I've worked as hard <laughs> a long time as I did that night working in the concession stand. Um, but anyway, that was fun. And then you also need to make sure that you tune in to Channel 7 every week because we do the coaches shows from each right. of the high schools. Right. So every night at 7, 8, and 9 p.m. on Channel 7, the coaches come into the studio and actually show parts of the game and talk through it and then give us the strategy and ha you know how they did certain things and it's very enlightening and it's really it cool to be able to, to see those clips and have the coaches talk about their strategy and what they do and how they do it and it's great to learn from them and they're, mm -hmm. they're good teachers they're 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 good at teaching us the game Obviously, they're good at teaching those players the game. Right. Athlete of the Month coming That's up. That's coming up. Laura and Jake and our team are really working hard to get the um, Athlete of the Month uh, show going. And it's a takeoff from the uh, Game of the Game Day magazine yeah. and the Chick-fil-A or the New, the New Link Chick-fil-A Game Day uh, partnership is going to be airing and it's going to be awesome. So we'll highlight different middle school and high school um, athletes and we'll actually have a variety of, of people going out to interview them and not only learn about them as an athlete but kind of get behind the scenes and learn about who they are individually and what other types of things they like to do. So it's going to be a, a neat show. That'll be a great show. Fair. Oh my County gosh. Fair, September 20th <laughs> through the 29th. It's on the way. I go back to being a kid you know, I love riding the rides. You would think I was 12 again <laughs> every time the fair comes in. I get the cotton candy and ride the Ferris wheel and the scrambler. And then, you know, since the uh, the new fairgrounds, it's not new anymore. It's right. been there for several years. But that facility has just opened up, you know, we're a, a lot higher capacity now right. Right. and a lot more variety of things to do at the fair. So that's coming up. So Many more opportunities. Mm -hmm. So I can't wait. Yeah. <laughs> It's, uh, it's been a great show this week. Mm -hmm. uh, we're looking forward to next week. We are. Hope that everybody will tune in to the link. Have a great week.